Good morning. This is November the 12th of uh, 2011. We are very happy to meet with you, Dr. Yusuf Abdul Haq. Uh, Thank you. I will come here in this time. We are here at the Tanweer Cultural Enlightenment Forum, yeah. downtown Nablus, Palestine. Yeah. As we say, the Dawah. Yeah. This is the uh, center of political thought, I believe, in Palestine, the avant-garde of the Palestinian Intifada. Yeah. And we are now going to consider some of the strategic issues which concern Palestine and the development of Palestine as an independent society. We have to consider the political economy of Palestine in particular, it would seem. Yeah. Now, I understand from a previous presentation of yours that there is a tremendous amount of economic integration between the State of Israel and the Arab countries which help to sustain the economy of Israel. Thank you, Dr. Abraham. And uh, Tanweer is respecting you very much. And our members are pleased with your visit to Palestine and to work together with you. About Israel and Arab words in the field of economic relation. You know that before first came David with Egypt, there is no economic relation officially. But anyone who can follow economic relation between all the world will discover that Zionist policy created many confusing ways to enter Arab worlds. Zionism, for example, were exporting some Israeli products and consider it European productions, maybe from Cyprus, maybe from France, and so we can enter Arab world, though of Arab world boycott before Egyptian can deal it with Israel. Now, after Egyptian can deal it, and after Oslo Accord, and after Wadi Araba with Jordan, the Israeli export to Arab world are increasing year by year. Israel didn't declare how much the real trade with our world, with our, with our Arab world. They just announced official numbers which are not reflect the real export from Israel to Arab world. For example, official numbers of Israeli exporting to Arab world is not exceed half a million. But many estimation said that it is double, in fact, in real, because they 
Israel used many ways so as to let its production to go to Arab world without declaring that it is Israeli uh, productions or products. In the second point, in investment, I think Zionism is spread all over the world. And so, the movement of capital from Arab world to some branch of Zionism is really found. It means there are a relation without announcement, without declaration. For example, many of my friends in Gulf, in Saudi Arabia, they told me that they have met many people who are working on behalf of some Zionist companies and uh, uh, economic activity. They didn't declare, but they do. These numbers are not discovered. I think that the relation in investment is even more than the relation in a treaty. Let us go another step. Are these economic relations, whether it is as official numbers or it is double or more than double? Are these economic relation between Israel and Arab world is very high enough to say that Israeli will will be for example hurted very much or will be weakened so deeply if this relation are stopped. In other words, let us assume that Arab words stop any relation with Israeli economy. Does Israeli economy will be fallen? I don't think. I don't think that because Israeli economy is depending on its relation with uh, developing countries, imperialism developing countries as Europe and USA. This is the main, the main way of Israeli economic future. So, why Israel is planning to enter Arab world? I think the Zionism policy is looking forward. They know that without making some domination in Arab world, Arab world, after five years, ten years, in the future, a new future, or in far future, Arab world will be rise up. So, economic relation with Arab world will enable Zionist policy to push Arab world in the way that will serve imperialism and Zionism. That is the main point. The second point of this relation is for all. Zionism policy as imperialism policy knows 
that oil is the source of development and of progress in the world maybe for more than half a century. This natural resources is in the Arab world and so Zion policy is planning to have a deep affection or a deep domination on Arab world oil it will help Zion policy to affect the great powers as in USA and in Europe. When Israeli policy has a deep affection on Arab oil, then it will have a heavy affection, a heavy pressure on imperialism states as USA and Europe. That's the nature of the relation between Arab world and Israeli economy, as I think. There's also an economic relation between the State of Israel and the occupied territories of 1967. I understand that there is a lot of uh, Israel products that are, in effect, exported to the West Bank. Yeah. The, this is a different way. And Zionist policy West Bank is a part of Israel. So the economic relation is very important for Israeli economy. Because this land with Palestinian people on it, if it has a strong economy, then it may be more resistant to Israeli occupation. In this way, every day we hear, especially in the last three years, that Israeli consider West Bank a part of Israel and they will never let anybody to dominate the borders, for example, between West Bank and Jordan. In the field of the interest of Israeli economy, it is very obvious more than the Arab world. Because here, Palestinian imports from Israel economy about 3 to 3.2 billion dollars. It is the third market in the world for Israel after USA and Europe, Europe as a whole, Europe market. So it is very important to Israeli economy. Yes, uh, Israeli exports is more than 50 million or 50 billion, maybe about now 60 billion. And when we say that Palestinian import about 3 billion, it is about 6% from uh, Israeli uh, export. But this percent is the third percent in the world. So it is very important. Second, as you have said about the workers, Yes, and about and about investment and also about about foreign trades about workers in the past we have about 30% of our work class 
are working in Israeli economy. 30%. About in the past years, before Oslo. In Oslo, after Oslo, between 1993-94 till 2000, the, this uh, person is stay constant. About 30% of our workers in Israeli economy. After Sharon uh, invaded Aqsa and then troubles and intifada rising up, those workers began to be more or less for Israeli policy. He didn't burn it for them. Now, it is no more than 40,000, which is less than 5 to 8 percent. But in the two cases, when we are before Oslo, or between 1994 and 2000, or now, any Palestinian worker in Israeli economy is subject to economic oppression at the following points. First, he has no security, social security. No social security. Second, he has no health care at all. Third, he is waking up from four to five o'clock morning and then he came back about seven to eight o'clock. It means more than 15 hours he is spending it in work and in going and returning to his home. This 13 hours he has a wage which is not exceeded maybe 50 to 60 percent of Israeli worker. Palestinian worker received about 90 shekel, 80 to 90 shekel a day. Israeli worker may be more than 160 to 70 shekel a day. So, Palestinian worker is less than 60% of Israeli worker. Another point. When the Palestinian left economy of West Bank, for example, or Gaza, then he didn't do anything to investment in West Bank. Unfortunately, they spent many of their wages in Israel. They received the wages, and when they received the wages, they spent it in inside Israel. The second point, as there is no economic life in Palestine under occupation, no hope to make development, no hope to be sure what will be happened in the coming day. Most of those workers, especially before uh, 2000, most of them, they used their wages and saving just to build building. Maybe this build is a big house, 
without any income. So when he is unemployed, he will have a house, but he has no income. This distract and damage economic factors, economic resources, economic development under incubation. Look for agriculture. Many of workers who were in Israeli economy have what we call country roots. They are farmers before they went to Israeli economy. And so their lands, their farms were neglected. No investment. This made Palestinian people more de dependent on Israel economy with regard to agricultural products. I will add in this uh, uh, point about investment. No one knows what the size or how much the size of Israeli investment in West Bank. I am sure that some Israeli capital, Zionist capital, is working inside West Bank with some uh, 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 individuals of Palestinians who are related or connected with their interest with occupation. This investment enabled Israeli economy to uh, take more profit from our economy and it will be changed or moved to Israeli economy. Another point about banking system. No Palestinian bank can make any transfers without going through Israeli bank system. And so Israeli bank system has or will, will, will get its percentage because he, 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 he will do something for the transfer to you. This percentage is not little because no one can control Israeli policy. No one. Some estimation said that every dollar Palestinian received from donors about 60 cent will go to Israeli economy through percentage commission or through buying from Israeli economy as most donors make specify, specification for their goods and they said you can buy this for example if the donor is Japan you can buy it from Japan or Israel from USA or Israel and so all the this money will go back to Europe or to Israel, maybe uh, Palestinian people will uh, receive a net of 40 percent of this donor, those uh, grants, 40 to 50 percent. In the field of trade, this is on that 
on kitab report the last report on kitab on kitab said that israeli make a changing in certificate of uh, products that Palestinian were imported from outside. When Palestinian wants, for example, uh, computers or any uh, other goods from France, from Europe, Israel will import these for Palestinian. And then Israel sell these goods to Palestinian as Israeli products. And so uh, tariff tax is not held by Palestinian. It is held by Israeli policy. Israel imports from France, for example, they impose tariff tax, Israel take tariff tax, and then Israel, this computer, buy it or sell it for Palestinian as Israeli production. So there is no tariff tax on Israeli production. In, in, all, in, in, in Paris Protocol, which is the economic agreement beside Oslo, they said that when we import from Israel as Israel production, there is no tariff, no tax. So Israel will take this tax for its budget. Anktad estimated this taxes about half a million yearly. Half a million yearly, it is the right of Palestinian authority, it is taken by Israel policy. Again, this half a? Half billion. Half a billion. Half a billion or million, yes, billion. A million in yes, French, yes. yes. about uh, 400, 447 million dollars. Uh, Half a billion, yeah. This is uh, taken by Israel, which is the right of Palestinian people. This is the relation between Palestinian uh, territories or Palestinian occupied territories and Israeli occupied. It is under domination, under Israeli domination, totally. We are living under Israel.